Hello everyone out there in internet land, it's Adam here and I'm going to be showing you a trick or two in Newt today. And what we're going to be basically doing is we're going to be, I don't know, going through a method of uh, motion blurring CG in Nuke uh, using motion vectors output from a 3D package. Uh, and so the media that we're going to be working today is um, a car that has been rendered from Maya and it has, uh, the, well, it's really three layers that have been output from Maya which constitute an environment and a car, uh, you know, in that environment. And yeah, we're just going to be motion blurring it and stuff. So without further ado, I will get stuck into showing you how to do that. So uh, the layers that we're going to be working with today are a car and its floor. Uh, a background which is uh, I guess light panels and then the lights that go in them and it's nothing special it's just three layers it's going to be very very dirty compositing very quick very straightforward um, but yeah uh, I guess you know we're just going to combine all these together and we're going to uh, you know motion blur it and so you know the basic move of the car is the car will you know it just kind of dollies, or sorry, pans from left to right on like, I guess, like a pedestal or like a, uh, I don't know, a turntable of some sort, and then it zooms in on the badge, like so. Anyway, so let's let's get into uh, compositing here, and then I'll show you how to, uh, I guess, motion blow the car and its environment. Okay, so I'm going to work with this layer first, the car. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to, I guess, quickly start merging stuff together. And, of course, this we've got in the background. And we want to bring those lights. These ones I'm talking about. On top of these. Okay, cool. So let's do that. And I'll just that into there and then pop our B into here. So basically what I've done is I've combined these two together. If I was to turn the lights off, you can see the lights sit in their light boxes. And if I was to just show the final output, that's it there. Well, it's not really a final output, it's just what we're going to be working with so far. Uh, anyway, so we've got all these, I guess, uh, car and its environment all blended together. Very, very, very basic compositing happening here. Uh, and I'm going to quickly show you how to apply uh, motion blur to this car when it spins on its in, on its pedestal, or whatever you want to call it, and whatever else. And this is very slowly going through this because I'm uh, dealing with OpenEXR files um, that are pretty large. Anyway, so, okay, let's say you want to motion blur this car based on its movement which uh, is an animation in Maya and what I've basically done is I've output motion vectors for each one of the layers which are open EXRs and anyway so basically what you'll see is in the read one image which is the car of course you'll see that I have an embedded uh, it's called an MV2E motion vector file, toxic perspective, you know, I should have renamed it, but that's our motion vector we're going to be working with, which is pretty much just a channel on its own in Nuke, and if we were to have a look at what that is, it's, you know, it looks weird, yeah, I know, but, you know, it's, it, it means something to Nuke, and it will eventually mean something to us, so basically, what this image means is, it's, it's like an output UV, or an output image that you can read to generate motion blur, uh, sorry, motion blur based on, you know, the object's movement. Okay, so the way that we're going to generate this motion blur is going to be quite, quite simple. Uh, what we're going to do is, if I switch this back to RGBA, so we're just looking at the final output, the thing that we have to do is, we, we basically just have to bring in a vector blur, which, handy enough, I've already selected and you just pretty much want to bring it into place and let's go to a frame where there's a bit of movement uh, let's go to I don't know this frame here uh, 
and let it churn through. Oh, I gotta get a better computer. Um, anyway, so uh, okay, so there's maybe a little bit of movement in that shot there. Maybe not enough. Maybe I'll go to frame 42. Yeah, that's better. It's starting to dramatically dolly into the uh, the badge. So what I'm gonna do? The only thing that I really have to do to get motion blur happening here is I'll go to my properties for the vector blur and on the UV channels all we have to do is we have to pipe in that uh, the M2V motion vector output that I was talking about before into it and what you'll notice it will start the motion blur now pay a particular attention to that because if you have a look closely here you can actually see it motion blurring uh, if I turn it off and turn it on. Yeah, it's a big difference. And that's how you generate motion blur in a, in a nuke. Uh, you know, dealing with CG rendered uh, data or CG renders, I should just say, and um, you know, utilizing those motion vectors output from Maya, uh, you know, in an effective way. It's very, very straightforward. However, it can be expensive. Um, so, you know, don't, don't go too overboard, uh, sorry, overboard with the multiply or multiplication because uh, you know I could jack it up to three now and you know it will take its time to really you know really motion blur but it's much more efficient than doing it you know in Maya or in any other 3D package so anyway yeah that's how you generate the motion blur um, you know like many of my other tutorials how many have I got out there? Two at the moment. <laughs> I hope this was some help to you. Uh, if it doesn't make sense or anything like that, let me know. And I can try and help you in some way to, I don't know, generate motion blur of your own. Okay, so that's me for the night. I'm going to hit the sack. I'm a little bit tired. Uh, I'll see you around.